Hello friends, this video on plant growth and development part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we will talk about determinate and indeterminate forms of growth. So what do we mean by these two? So determinate growth. Determine. Determine means something which is already determined. So we know. So that is called determinate growth. And the second one is indeterminate growth. So let us see what are they. So determinate growth is the one in which the growth of an organism stops at a certain point. So that means we know how much that particular organism will grow. So it will grow only up to a certain point and beyond that the growth will stop. That is called determinate growth. Now most animals have determinate growth. For example, all of us human beings. When we were born, we were very cute, very small, right? Small in size. Then we started growing. Our size increased, height increased, weight increased. So everything, the body parts also increased in their respective sizes. And finally, when we become adult, it like the size increases quite a bit when compared to how we were born. But once we reach a certain size, after that the growth stops. For example, when we all are like almost 20, 22, after that there is not much growth in case of human beings. So most of the animals have determinate growth where the animal will not continue to grow throughout their life. They will grow only up to a certain time. Now, if you talk about plants and plants also, there are certain parts, for example, the leaves, seeds, fruits of the plants, they all have a, a growth limit. So if you look at the leaves of the plant, if, if they keep on growing throughout their life, I mean, you will actually end up having huge leaves, but that is not the case. They also grow only up to a certain size. So here you can see in this plant, these leaves are very small, so they still have scope to grow, so they will grow. But the leaves which are at the bottom, these leaves, they are already grown up and they are not going to grow any further. So leaves, seeds, fruits, they all are examples of uh, parts of a plant which show determinate growth. So now the question is, why the growth stops? How, who stops the growth of the plant? Now the growth stops due to the production of some retardant hormones. So some hormones are released which actually inhibits growth. So these hormones are released at specific sites, for example at leaves or at the fruits and that is why only these sites growth stops. So that is why as I said there are some parts of the plant which show indeterminate growth that is they keep on going growing throughout their lifetime. But there are some parts like leaves which should determine growth due to the presence of some retardant hormones which inhibits growth after a certain time. Let us now talk about indeterminate growth. Here growth continues as long as it leaves. The, as long as the plant leaves, growth will continue. It is also known as open form of growth. Now since it continues forever, that is why it is called open growth or open form of growth. Now mostly plants show indeterminate growth. That's because this is... That's because this is found in the roots and the shoots and that is why you see the roots keep on growing. So the bigger the tree, the deeper the roots are. So the roots also get like extended and they are deep seated inside the soil. So the roots as well as the shoot. So if you see, look at the shoot, there are also branches keep coming up, new branches keep coming up and that happens because of indeterminate growth. So the roots and shoots of the plant show indeterminate growth as a result of which if you see the size of the plant it keep on increasing over time. So now the question is, what causes indeterminate growth in plants? Why do some plants keep on growing throughout their life? Who is actually making the plant grow so much? So what causes this indeterminate growth? That is because of the presence of meristems. You remember while we were talking about the different types of plant tissues, we spoke about meristematic tissues, right? So they are nothing but the meristems. So these meristems are present at certain locations in a plant and due to the presence of these meristems, 
growth is always there because the function of these metastomatic tissues is to divide. So when they divide, more cells are formed. So when more cells are produced, cell growth is there. So that is how growth takes place due to the presence of meristematic tissues or meristems, whatever you call it. So now when we talk about meristems, they are primarily two types of apical meristems which are present in a plant. That is the meristems which are present at the tip of a plant part. They are called apical because apical, the term apical mean is derived from the term apex and apex means tip. So there are two types of apical meristem that is root apical meristem and shoot apical meristem. So the meristem which is present at the tip of root that is root apical meristem while the one which is present at the tip of shoot is the shoot apical meristem. Now you can understand what causes indeterminate growth in roots as well as shoots. So since at the tip of the root you have the meristems so cells will divide new cells will be formed so the roots will keep on growing similarly at the tip of shoot also you have apical meristems which will keep on forming new cells and therefore growth is observed at the shoot tips as well and as a result of the presence of these apical meristems the length of the plant would increase above it will increase because of the increase in the shoot and below it will increase because of the increase in length of the root so due to the presence of apical meristems the length of the plant would increase so as I said, root apical meristem is present in root tips. This causes an increase in root length. So because of this, the plant will keep on increasing this side. So the length would increase in this direction. Shoot apical meristem present at stem tip. So shoot length would increase. It is present somewhere here. So because of this, this length increases. So the overall length will keep on increasing because of the presence of apical meristems. Now, when we talk about indeterminate growth, that is growth which happens throughout, throughout in a plant, that not only happens in terms of the length or height, it also happens widthwise. So let us see what causes that. So now from this, we can say that apical meristems cause primary growth in plants. So this is the primary growth, that is the growth in length. Now, there are lateral meristems which cause secondary growth in plants. So when we talk about secondary growth, we will talk about the increase in width or the girth, whatever you call it. Now, these lateral meristems are also known as Cambium. So cambium is another name for lateral meristems. We have spoken about all these things while we were talking about uh, tissues and then morphology and anatomy of plants. We, we already know all these terms but still just to explain you how it happens. So it increases the root or the stem girth. So if you see a plant which is which is a very young plant or maybe a seedling when it turns into a plant the stem would be very thin when you look at its thickness. Now gradually when it, keep on, it keeps on growing and uh, it becomes a huge tree, how do you see? The same stem has now turned into a bark which is very thick, hard and tough, right? So this that means over a period of time it is not only the length of the stem and the root which is increasing or growing, it is also the thickness which is growing and this growth in the thickness is known as the secondary growth in plants and this secondary growth is caused by lateral meristems which are also known as cambium. Now this cambium are of two types vascular cambium and cork cambium. So if you actually take a cross section of this uh, stem you can actually see the presence of vascular cambium. So here you have the vascular cambium there and outer on the outer side you have the cork cambium layers so these two layers will form new cells and that is how it will keep on adding layers for example initially there were two layers but now these two layers are present now these two layers maybe let us suppose this is the vascular cambium and this is the cork cambium so these two layers in turn will produce additional layers both on their outer side as well as their inner side now when they produce new layer of cells what will happen the thickness is gradually increasing with time 
so these can be um, by forming new cells by cell division they give rise to new layer of cells and as a result the thickness or the girth of the stem and the root increases and this is known as secondary growth in plants okay so now we talked about determinate and indeterminate growth and what causes both of them now the question is how do we know that a plant is growing so one simple answer that you can give is if the size of the plant is increasing that means the plant is growing okay so that is a very uh, what do you say a superficial answer it is like okay you see it from outside if you see the size is increasing you say that the plant is growing but when will the increase in size become noticeable let us suppose if you uh, if you plant a small plant in your garden today so tomorrow will you see a noticeable growth or a noticeable increase in size no i think even after five three or four days also you will not see a very noticeable growth as far as size is concerned but how do you know whether the plant is growing or not so when we talk about the growth of a plant it can be measured now the question is how can we measure the growth so whenever we say that a plant is growing we actually mean to say that the amount of protoplasm in the plant cells is increasing let us suppose this is one plant cell so this is the cell so inside whatever you have that is your like cytoplasm and the cell organelle so this entire matter inside is protoplasm now if this cell increases in size say the same cell got enlarged and it became like this so what will happen the amount of protoplasm would increase or let us suppose this was a single cell before the cell underwent cell division and it formed many cells so now in this case also the amount of your protoplasm increased initially it was only in one cell now it is in five cells so the protoplasm amount also became five times so whenever growth will happen whenever new cells are formed or the cell enlargement has happened or area has increased or the volume has increased so whatever the case may be the amount of protoplasm will also increase now the question is in order to know whether a plant is growing or not we need to measure that increase in the protoplasm so what are the different parameters looking at which we can say that a plant is growing increase in length of course that is one factor so if you see a noticeable increase in length but that is not the only one because sometimes the increase in length is not that noticeable increase in width maybe the thickness of the stem is increasing increase in volume or the amount of material contained inside the plant part is now more so the volume has increased increase in area for example if you take an example of leaf so the growth of a leaf can be very easily judged by looking at the area of the leaf so on the the picture also you can see that this has got a smaller area while this has a bigger area so you can say that okay it is growing increase in weight okay so when you talk about weight almost all plants contain a lot of water so if you directly take a plant part and weigh it you are actually weighing the fresh weight of the tissue present in the plant but one another way of weighing it is you remove all the water from the plant you dehydrate it completely and then you measure its dry weight so if by looking at the dry weight also you can say whether the plant is growing or not because if the plant is growing the weight should also increase so if there is an increase in weight then we can say that yes the plant is growing now see there are so many different ways by which you can say whether a plant is growing or not now is it is it justified if by just by looking at one of these parameters you decide that a plant is growing let us suppose that a plant is increasing in length so you just give gave a statement that this plant is growing but that is not justified because there are so many different parameters that get affected when a plant is growing so if the length is increasing but let us suppose when you measure the weight of the plant you see that the weight has actually reduced maybe the length has only increased because of the presence of the apical meristem but inside 
the plant is all dried up it has lost all the leaves the weight has reduced drastically so the leaves are all gone so if that is the case you would not say that the plant is growing right so th there are multiple parameters which decide whether a plant is growing and therefore one factor should not be relied upon to decide whether a plant is growing or not increase in the number of cells as i said by the process of cell division more cells will be formed when more cells are formed of course the plant is growing or cell enlargement that is increase thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again is that is 